Despite widespread protests in Russia following last December's fraudulent Duma elections, Vladimir Putin is certain to return to the presidency in May. Welcome everyone! In today's video we're going to tell you Putin sends nuclear-capable missiles to Iran. Will Putin repeat his 2004-2008 approach to Iran, when Russia negotiated the S-300 air defense system contract with Tehran? Or will he maintain Russia's success in finding common ground with the US on Iran, as witnessed under President Dmitry Medvedev, who cancelled the cease 300 contract? But before we proceed the further video, if you're new to this channel, remember go ahead and to hit the bell icon to subscribe, so you won't miss the informative videos we will upload in the future. During the Medvedev administration, Moscow worked more closely with Washington on Iran, but it did not and still does not exclude out engaging with Tehran. In 2010, Russia voted in favor of additional, stronger sanctions against Iran and the United Nations Security Council on SKE. Nonetheless, Moscow and Tehran have maintained diplomatic engagement and their relations have stabilized and began to improve from a low point in the winter of 2010 to 2011. At the same time, Russia maintains that Iran must comply with its obligations under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty NEPT and fully cooperate with IAEA inspectors. However, Russia is concerned that if compliance is pushed too hard, Iran would renounce its treaty responsibilities and withdraw from the NEPT. In February 2011, Moscow began to resist another round of UNSC sanctions, and in July 2011, it proposed a step-by-step -step plan coordinated with other permanent members of the Security Council and Germany the P-51. The Moscow approach promised Iran progressive sanctions relief in exchange for better cooperation with the IIA in monitoring Iran's nuclear enrichment program. Putin's hatred of use power and distrust of American objectives will exacerbate tensions between Moscow and Washington. Nonetheless, Putin's distrust of Iran will surpass his concerns about the United States. Everything else being equal, Russia will always prioritize the United States over Iran. Most Russian specialists now believe Iran is on the verge of developing a military nuclear weapons program though it has not decided to go all the way as well as a ballistic missile program. Russia considers these projects a danger to its interests. Moscow's decision to toughen its approach to Iran on the nuclear problem is likely to remain the foundation of Russian policy in the next years, as long as the U.S.-Russia reset does not collapse completely, particularly if Iran does not move towards greater collaboration with the IAEA. Russia's oncoming domestic and external issues will increase the desire to continue some form of reset, even if via Putin's clenched teeth. Russian specialists worry that a major deterioration in U.S.-Russia relations could prompt Moscow to turn back towards Tehran. However, the record on the CS-300 contract suggests that any reduction in Russian support for sanctions will be largely determined by Iran's willingness to cooperate more fully with the IAEA in clarifying Iran's nuclear enrichment program and moving towards verifiable restraints on its enrichment activities. On regional problems, however, Russia and Iran will continue to appear to engage in friendly relations with one another. The Arab Spring has posed overlapping but not similar issues and opportunities for both Middle Eastern countries, notably how to deal with Syria. The looming withdrawal of American forces from Afghanistan has increased the possibility that Russia and Iran will once again have to work closely together to combat Taliban threats to their regional equities, as they did before to 9 11 Engagement has long been Moscow's default strategy for dealing with Tehran. Russia's present step-by-step -step initiative appears to be intended to maintain interaction while highlighting Russia's prospective position as a mediator between Iran and the international community. From Moscow's standpoint, Iran's exit from the NEMP would be dangerous, and the international community should do everything possible to retain Iran in the NEMP and IAEA inspectors in Iran, even if the conditions are less than perfect. At the same time, incremental steps do not reduce UN's pressure on Iran unless Tehran increases its cooperation with the IAEA. Iran's involvement with the IAEA is consequently critical to the future of Russian-Iranian relations. Their tone and tint will be determined by Iran's desire or unwillingness to repair its situation with the IAEA and the UN Security Council. If Iran's ties with the IAEA improve, the possibility of new Russian-Iranian contracts and other forms of collaboration increases. Moscow's attitude to Tehran will always differ from Washington's, even when their objectives on Iran align as they do today. Moscow does not wish to trigger Iranian intervention in Central Asia, the South Caucasus, or the Russian North Caucasus. At the same time, Tehran avoids crossing any Russian red lines in these areas. Preventing an outside military strike on Iran is one of Russia 
and Iran's shared security goals, Russian diplomacy has worked for years to avoid this outcome while simultaneously discouraging Iran from advancing its nuclear enrichment program. Moscow's efforts to prevent the use of force against Iran are motivated by the worry that any foreign military action against neighboring Iran will have unintended consequences that will directly harm Russian security interests in ways that are difficult to forecast and contain. This paper is based on data that was current as of January 9, 2012. Russian President Vladimir Putin has asked for the resumption of manufacture of intermediate and shorter-range nuclear-capable missiles, which were previously banned under a now-defunct pact with the USA. Under the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty INF, signed in 1987 by Mikhail Gorbachev and Ronald Reagan, the two superpowers agreed to discard their nuclear and conventional ground-launched ballistic and cruise missiles with ranges of 500 to 5,500 km. According to the Arms Control Association, the deal removed an entire category of nuclear weapons and mandated rigorous on-site verification inspections. According to the Arms Control Association, the United States and Russia destroyed 2,692 short, medium, and intermediate-range missiles before the treaty's implementation deadline of June Sicily. Beginning in 2014, the U.S. accused Russia of non-compliance, and the two countries traded non-compliance charges and denials for several years. The Trump administration withdrew from the deal in 2019, citing worries about Russia's non-compliance and China's missile stockpile. Renewed missile production is now required, Putin said Friday during a televised meeting of Russia's Security Council, because the United States has resumed production and deployed missiles to Denmark and the Philippines. Today, it is known that the United States not only manufactures these missile systems, but has also brought them to Europe for drills, specifically Denmark. It was recently announced that they are in the Philippia, the Russian leader stated. In April, the United States Army announced the successful deployment of a mid-range capability missile system to northern Luzon, Philippines, as part of a military exercise. According to it, this landmark deployment marks a significant milestone for the new capability while enhancing interoperability, readiness and defense capabilities in coordination with the armed forces of the Philippines. We need to start production of these strike systems and then, based on the actual situation, make decisions about where, if necessary to ensure our safety, to place them Putin told the Council's members. The idea of resuming production of nuclear-capable missiles comes amid Russia's conflict against Ukraine. Putin recently threatened to deploy conventional weapons within striking reach of the United States and its European allies if the long-range weaponry delivered to Ukraine enabled Ukraine to strike deeper into Russia. According to Reuters, citing many unnamed sources, Iran has given Russia with over 400 strong surface-to-surface -surface ballistic missiles. A large number of the weapons were claimed to be short-range tactical ballistic missiles from the Fate 110 family, such as the Zolfaghar which has a range of 300 to 700 kilometers. Iran has previously refuted the story, which has not been corroborated by Washington. The revelation, however, came after Russian Security Council Secretary Nikolai Petrushev and his Iranian counterpart, Rear Admiral Ali Akbar Amadian of the Islamic Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, announced a new type of bilateral military relationship on January 24, 2024. If confirmed, the missile shipments would represent a qualitatively different level of cooperation as well as changing dynamics in the Middle East, which could have influenced Tehran's choice. Iran has generally been reticent to transfer ballistic missiles to Russia, fearing repercussions from not only the United States but also European countries. Until October 2023, when a United Nations arms embargo on missile deliveries to Iran was lifted, Iran was concerned that European Security Council members would activate the snapback mechanism outlined in the 2015 Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. Iran can now legally deliver the missiles, and such arms shipments are sanctioned on a voluntary basis. European countries voted to keep missile export prohibitions in place, but they were unable to reimpose universal UN penalties. The war in Gaza has had a tremendous impact on Iranian thinking. Prior to October 7, 2023, the United States and Iran reached an accord in which Iran reduced its production of highly enriched uranium and released five U.S. dual citizens in exchange for access to $6 billion in frozen oil profits and less harsh uses. Enforcement of oil sanctions. Since the Hamas strikes and Israeli retribution, tensions have grown between U.S. and Iran-backed troops ranging from Gaza to Syria, Iraq, and the Red Sea. This has reduced the possibility of new U.S.-Iran accords. There's also the issue of quid pro quos. Now that Russia's war in Ukraine has entered its third year, Moscow is in need of missiles and may be more open in responding to Iran's requests for advanced Russian weaponry. 
Other aspects of increased Iran-Russia military cooperation are notable. Iran has supplied Russia with ammunition, artillery shells, and drone Shayed 131-136 series, and the more modern Mohager 6, including the establishment of an entire facility on Russian land to produce Iranian-style drones. In November 2023, Tehran declared that it would get Russian Su-35 fighter jets and Mi-28 attack helicopters. The deal was believed to be finalized, although it does not appear to have occurred yet. Iranian ballistic missile sales to Russia, if confirmed, indicate that fighter jets, helicopters, and possibly even the S-400 missile defense system will be transferred to Tehran soon. In February 2024, Russia also launched an Iranian spacecraft into orbit, signaling growing relations in the space industry. According to Iranian media, Yak-130 combat training aircraft have arrived and are operationally ready. Russia may also begin to utilize the new Iranian kamikaze drone Shayad-101, which Iran-backed militias have used to devastating success against us soldiers in the Middle East. Military connections between Iran and Russia are part of a larger pattern of cooperation. For example, in December 2023, Tehran signed a long-awaited free trade pact with the Russia-led Eurasian Economic Union. The same month, the two declared that they were close to finalizing a substantial bilateral agreement. This would most certainly replace a 10-year contract inked in 2001 that had been extended multiple times. The new accord will last 20 years and be more ambitious in terms of military, economic, and political cooperation. On February 28, 2024, at a meeting of the Iran-Russia Joint Economic Commission in Tehran, Russian Deputy Prime Minister Alexander Novak and Iran's oil minister Javed Alji signed 15 memorandums. Despite such accords, bilateral trade declined by 17% in 2023, totaling $5 billion. It seems improbable that Iran and Russia will form an official alliance. The current cooperation is more fluid, allowing the two parties to maneuver in the international arena. Iran and Russia have traditionally disliked formal alliances. Both have criticized them as a Cold War-era commodity that the West continues to adore and promote. Instead, the two countries are expected to announce a roadmap for bilateral relations that includes allusions to mutual sovereignty, the need to establish a just multipolar world order, and the West's irresponsible and destructive behavior. This could be comparable to the 25-year agreement Iran reached with China in March 2021. This stopped short of a full-scale alliance and has yet to result in significant gains in trade or Chinese investment in Iran. Given the additional restrictions imposed on the Iranian economy, the Iran-Russia Accord may face similar difficulties. Furthermore, Moscow is unwilling to align with Iran on all major problems. The two hold opposing views in Syria, the South Caucasus, and even the Red Sea where ships carrying Russian oil have recently been targeted by Iran-backed Houthi rebels. For Russia, better ties with Iran are important for increasing pressure on the United States in the Middle East. Washington is also concerned that Moscow has modified its stance on the nuclear problem and no longer opposes Iran developing full-scale nuclear capability. With the use of Iranian drones in Ukraine, Tehran and Moscow are getting closer to forming a de facto united front against the United States from the Black Sea to the Persian Gulf. Moscow regards Ukraine as a proxy state exploited by Washington to inflict misery on Russia. This leads Russia to consider Iran as a tool for retaliation against the United States. However, Iran has its own game to play. Tehran recognizes that Russia requires it, and the Islamic Republic is unlikely to let itself be drawn into a Middle Eastern quagmire for Russia's gas sake. Iran has no ambitions to wage direct war with the United States or Israel, limiting Moscow's aspirations of exploiting Tehran as a significant distraction for the West. Still, the long-term prospects for Iranian-Russian cooperation appear positive. Russia has increasingly turned to the Middle East and Asia since being sanctioned for invading Ukraine. Similarly, Iran looks to the east. That's all for today's video. With hardliners in command in both Moscow and Tehran, and a high possibility of ongoing conflict with the West, both countries recognize the need to deepen bilateral ties. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button to avoid missing any new videos from our channel. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.